Welcome to Hot Flashbacks, where we boldly navigate the ups and downs and unexpected detours of our 30s and 40s, while finally recalling how clueless we were in our 20s. I'm Molly Ward, your captain through this midlife roller coaster. Stick around for laughs, life lessons, and maybe a few I can't believe I survived that stories. Follow our journey on Instagram and Facebook at Hot Flashbacks. Make sure to like, follow, and share so I can keep making these episodes. Let's dive in. Some some folks and some folks. Well, whenever time I say folks, I feel like the oldest person ever. <laughs> Welcome to Hot Flashbacks. I'm your host, Molly Ward. Excited to have y'all here. And today I'm going to be put in my place, my rightful old person place. It's like a rocking chair, crusty rocking chair with knitting needles and condiments that you jam, I guess, you know, that's kind of what I envision as my old life. You can, you're, you're trying not to laugh. I see you. We have, we have a video going. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be put in my rightful old person place today by my friend Elsa. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here, and I can't wait to put Molly in her place. Hopefully, I'll be able to. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you will be. So today, I wanted to talk about really like generation gaps and age differences. So just humor us all, Elsa. Exactly how old are you? I am 26 years old. And, you know, I'm just living life. As a as a twenty six year old, ah, twenty six. Those were the days, and and not you're not just a twenty six year old. You are like a twenty six year old that is like pretty put together. You got like a job and hobbies and a person in your life who cares about you and four or five cow stuffed animals. Like you have like all the things all twenty six year olds kind of dream of. Yeah, that's like so nice of you to say. <laughs> And honestly, sometimes I I think about where I am at in life and I'm like, wow, I'm doing kind of good. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm surprised. You made it. How how well I'm doing. <laughs> so what year did you graduate high school? I graduated in 2016. Ugh, 2016. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about sort of perceptions around social media and technology and also like fashion and social trends, because I think that we have some vastly different experiences. I mean, there's almost 20 years between us. You wouldn't know it by looking at me, of course, but um, <laughs> we think we have some vastly different experiences. And I also need to learn some things today about how to be like maybe a little cooler, like, you know, hip. Oh, is that I think I mean, um, we don't really say hip anymore. Okay. <laughs> Not a good start, Molly. Not a good start. Okay. But I think you're cool if if that makes you feel any better. Okay. People still say cool though. Yeah, Ugh. I think so at least. Okay. I don't know. Here's the thing. Like, I was I was born in 1998. So I'm kind of on the cusp, you know? I'm I could either be seen as a Gen Z, which is kind of where I put myself. Okay. But but I could also potentially be seen as like a very very young millennial. Dang. Which Yeah, I guess you're right. Which I don't Yes, which I don't necessarily put myself in the millennial box, but there are some things where I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I definitely understand where the millennial is coming from. Okay, I'm a millennial though. Like that's that's how far that generation gap is. So millennials are 1981 to I think 1996. Right? Yes. And you were born in 98. Or 97. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's wild to me because I so there's so many different things that have happened in that time period between when I was born and when you were born, <laughs> like, it's hard to think that we would be like even close to being in the same general. I feel young. That's nice. You're a millennial. I'm a millennial. <laughs> you can do a triple quad 
cow. Sow cow. And I can do a double Lutz twist. So we're Let, really doing well. Let, <laughs> we really are. Let's talk about how we know each other because that's the thing I always have to do. Is we have to provide some context here. So why okay. does 43-year-old rocking chair, crusty old Molly know <laughs> and associate with young 26-year-old spry Elsa? Crusty old Molly. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, oh my god! So, so how do we know each other? Do you want me to yeah. explain? Oh, okay, it's all you. So, me, Molly works in the building that I work in, but we don't necessarily work for the same company. We just work in the same place. So, me and Molly get to work closely with each other sometimes, and it's very fun. Okay, and tell us some of your hobbies besides collecting cows, not real cows. Oh, yes. So. I did show Molly my cow collection, Mm -hmm. my cow stuffed animal collection, because I have an obsession with cows. Uh, So that's, you know, that's, that's me. I also was a cheerleader at Weber State for seven years. And um, that's like a really long time to be in college. I just want to say. Yeah. I mean, humble brag here, but I did it in five. So. I mean, so here's the thing. I, I wasn't a very good student. I'm not going to lie. But also, COVID happened during the time that I was cheering. And then that just like didn't really count as a year, you know? Okay. So then, so then we also got an extra year of eligibility. So I got to compete six times. And I took full advantage of that. And also, part of the reason that I did that is because... I'm getting my master's degree too. So it, it wasn't all just spent on my bachelor's degree. Okay. All right. I thought I won up to you because I did yeah. it in five, but whatever. <laughs> I always tell people I got my bachelor's in five, but I got two and I changed my major. So I feel like that's pretty good. That's really impressive. Thanks. Five years. I I couldn't have done it. Well, I, <clears throat> I there was a second there where I was like, am I ever going to graduate? I don't know if I'm going to. It was one of my, it's one of my humble <laughs> brags, you know, is that I, I graduated from college in five years. Um, so I have two bachelor's degrees and you have like 700 medals and they feel kind of <laughs> equal, right? I mean, I feel like it's the same thing, same yeah. diff, same diff. Um, I do have a collection of trophies from when I played T-ball um, that I hold near and dear. Um, and <laughs> I did one time run a 5K, which I also got a medal in, which I mean, wow. just, yeah, I know it's a That's lot. Impressive. I don't talk about it a lot because, you know, <laughs> I don't want people to be uncomfortable. So, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> you are, you are like a world champion, right? Not just like a, like a county yes, lady. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for, for seven years and during some of those seven years, I was also and I still am technically on the U.S. national team. So they have uh, the selection process again in October to see if I can be on the U.S. national team again. So that's really exciting. Yeah. But yeah, I've won four world titles with the U.S. national cheerleading team. Awesome. Um, yeah. I got second place in the 200 meter uh track race on my senior year of high school so wow yep. i mean just I the one time never run track okay see that's so impressive we all have our strengths um you do. <laughs> uh let's talk about the <laughs> the generational divide here so i need to know like when you were growing up what were some of like the cool things to wear like fashionable items that you had to have maybe let's say like in high school what, what did that look like well, when I was in junior high, I want to say it was definitely Hollister. Like if you weren't wearing Hollister, you were lame. And a big thing in high school was skinny jeans. Skinny jeans was like the thing to wear. And also like the 2016 makeup, you'll see it on Instagram reels or like TikTok. And people talk about the... 2016 makeup and it's when 
just like high school girls would go to school with like a full face of makeup, like a cut crease. They'd draw on their eyebrows. They'd be wearing lipstick. They'd be doing contour and highlight all just for school. Girl, I don't even put that level of effort in ever. Not even for prom. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. So (laughs) Hollister, which meant probably like was American Eagle pretty cool too then? Or was that not as cool? I don't know. I, maybe so in junior high it was Hollister. I think in high school it was it was American Eagle. And those places American are still Eagle around, aren't they? Is there still a Hollister? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people wear Hollister as much anymore, though. Yeah, I feel like if I just like showed up to like hang out with my other friends and we all pushed our rocking chairs close together, I would be wearing a Hollister hoodie. They'd be like, "What? What is that? Why?" Yeah, like it's not. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a big thing is back then, you know, Hollister had like the big Hollister logos on all of their shirts and their yeah. hoodies and all that kind of stuff. And that was cool. Like you wanted to have the logos. You wanted to have all of that. But now you want generic clothing. It's like you don't want any like logos really on anything. You kind of just want a plain black t-shirt or a plain white t-shirt, you know? Yeah, you're right. There was a, a period of time where everybody had, you know, something written across their chest, you know, uh, Abercrombie, mm-hmm. Hollister, you know, Pacific Sunwear, whatever it was, or like whatever brand people were wearing, you know, the Gap sweatshirts. It just says like <laughs> Gap. So, yep. When I was in high school, I don't really know if I dressed cool. So I don't know if this is like a really good because I just I wore similar to what I think high schoolers are wearing now. Um, so baggy jeans. I didn't I nobody was wearing skinny jeans at the time, really, or they were. I wasn't looking at them, I guess, because I, I was not in that. But I think some of that's like a self-conscious thing, right? Like people, especially when you're like in junior high or high school, you might be a little body conscious. And so I wore baggy jeans and big Big sweatshirts or hoodies and any version of overalls you could find. I had black corduroy. Oh, yeah. Oh, so many overalls. You didn't wear overalls? No. Okay. I graduated in 1999. And I just want you to know that in like 19, probably 96 or so. So around the time when you were just like popping into the world. That was terrible imagery. Um, I was wearing... (laughs) Brown corduroy overalls, jean overalls, gray corduroy overalls. And corduroy was also really in. So all the corduroy pants. And Pacific Sunwear. I remember Pac Sun being like a cool place to shop. Do they still have that? See, I feel like, yeah. And I feel like Pac Sun is definitely a cool place to shop these days. Okay. Well, and this is also, so I grew up primarily on the West Coast and lived in California. So I think some of it is also relative. You know, Pacific Sunwear Mm -hmm. is kind of a beachy kind of brand. And so I feel like you might look silly wearing your packs on in Oklahoma, but I feel like in California, it made sense. And so where did you grow up? Yeah. Um, I grew up mostly in Utah. So I was born in Florida, but I didn't live there for very long. Okay. So... Utah primarily, I would say. So you weren't wearing like all of the years surfing where... shirts because there's no surfing in Utah. I think that's weird. Yeah, so, I know. All those surfing brands like Rip Curl and all that kind of stuff was not not cool here in 19... 19- yeah, or um, like Hurley. Oh, yeah, or Hurley, people yeah. Really, people didn't really wear that here. You know, all those brands kind of sell out eventually. Like, I was thinking this the other day because when when I was in high school, Hurley was a popular brand. But mm-hmm. now you can find Hurley at Costco. Just so you know. Yeah. So that's how I know. Yeah. That's how I know that I am old is because the things I used to wear are now at Costco. They just follow you your whole life. <laughs> you just keep buying the same things. But really, a lot of those brands eventually they sell out. For instance, I remember Airwalk being a very popular brand. A lot of my friends were skaters and in Southern California, and Airwalk was like like a hot skate company. And now you can find our walk at Walmart. So, um, because eventually, what? Yeah. (laughs) So for me, when I was 
like really young, it was DCs were like the cool sh- skater shoe. Yeah. But I was really young then. I was in like fourth through sixth grade. That was, those were the things. But then throughout high school, it was bands. Everybody wore bands. Yeah. I think bands so. is still pretty popular. I think so too. Yeah. I don't know if it's as popular as it used to be, but I still wear bands. What's popular like, right now? I feel like a lot of people wear Converse. Okay, yeah. And check. I got those. And Nike's. Yeah, you're right. Like sneakers. Those are huge. Yes, Nike sneakers are like huge. Yeah. I feel like those are the two biggest ones. When you picture yourself like in the future and you close your eyes and you think about being an old bird like me, what, <laughs> what how do you it's imagine, so <laughs> how do you imagine that you're going to dress? Because I got to tell you, like I'm, it's fashion in your middle ages is a weird thing. Because like, I'm, I don't feel like I'm that old that I'm going to wear like, you know, a, a shirt with like a basket of kittens on it like i don't know and uh, you know what i mean like or like i don't know that's what i'm picturing um or like yeah i don't know i actually think about that a lot and i'm like what would i wear because i have no idea yeah because if i don't wear work clothes i'm wearing athletic clothing and i feel like maybe at some point you can't really wear athletic clothing anymore Mm, like out and about. I don't know. I feel like COVID really loosened the rules on on formality. <laughs> like I, I mean, even at work, it's like a lot less formal than it used to be. Mm-hmm. Just having being able to wear jeans and things like that. I think people just got more relaxed. But I just wonder what it is that because I kind of have this theory that you kind of just dress the same. Like you just whatever you have and whatever sort of popular when you're you know, a teenager and even in your, you know, mid or late twenties when you're still kind of fashionable and have the time and money to worry about that stuff. I think it just kind of stays with you. Like, I feel like I, I don't dress that different than I used to. I don't know. And I never pictured. I don't know what I would dress like. Yeah, I, so I agree in a sense, but then I also think about how kids and young adults wear crop tops oh yeah and you know i just think that personally at some point i probably won't be wearing crop top anymore yeah but is that like a like how do you find cute clothing that isn't a crop top you know i think i struggle most with how do i find things that aren't for work because because if i want to go out Mm -hmm. with some folks to a comedy club and then a bar or something. I'm like, okay, what do I put on? I don't know what people in their mid forties are wearing to look nice without looking like they're going to a deposition. You know, like I'm not, (laughs) this is not my staff meeting. How do I, how do I do that? (laughs) No, it's true. Like I, it is true. And I I struggle with it too. And even at like 26, I struggle with it. I think a lot of folks my age are like, Oh, I know. It's the same shirt with glitter. That's what I'll wear. That's <laughs> just like, oh, it's shiny. That's what I'll wear. That's a, that's that is how like I figure out what to wear on like a Saturday night is like, oh, look, it's shiny. I'll put that on. It's fancy. <laughs> I, I think fashion has taken a total almost like a 360 in the sense that, like I said, some of the, the things that I was wearing when I was 17 are the same things that that Aaron is wearing at 17. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I've noticed also. It's like something. So the styles are basically repeating themselves from what was a, what was the thing in like late 80s, early 90s, all that kind of stuff. The other thing that I've noticed, though, is now more than ever, I feel like there isn't a specific style that everybody wants to dress like. People are like less like trend oriented yes yeah yes i feel like everybody kind of has their own style that they want to wear and i feel like when i was in junior high and high school everybody pretty much dressed Dressed the the same same. yeah 
But now I can look at a group of friends and one person would be wearing a sundress. Another person will be wearing athletic clothing. Another person will be wearing baggy pants and a baggy shirt. Another person will be wearing skinny jeans and an oversized hoodie. Another person would be wearing uh, shorts. Like, it's just so random. Do you ever play Spot a Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you ever play that? <laughs> You just no, kind of, no, that's hilarious, though. I mean, you just kind of, you know, you just kind of guess because you just take a look at what they're wearing and you're like, I bet, I bet. Yeah. But that's funny because <laughs> um, it is actually, there are studies that show that um, people of the Mormon faith also look alike. Um, I've seen those, I've seen people talk about those studies. Yeah. That's and so funny. So and they also they dress, do. they also dress alike, but in that sense, it's culture, yeah. right? You're sort of, it's not any different really than you being in a group of people that surf and therefore you all look like surfers. It's kind of similar right. to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think a spot of Mormon's a good one. You should try. Yeah. <laughs> just play some. And the other Next big time I'm out and about. Okay. Well, the problem is you can't really go up and to somebody and ask. So you just have to kind of like decide, you know, you just have to assume. You just have to assume. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other big changes, I think, generationally have been technology. When I think of where I was at in, in 1997, when I was a sophomore in high school, it's wild to me how different things are and how different things must be for people of your generation. When I, I remember when we got the internet and, you know, you'd have to sit and kind of wait for it to dial up. And sometimes you would get the internet and sometimes you'd be like, ah, oh, it's not working. Like literally just like you'd start it up and it would make all those weird noises, you know, and you'd be like, is it going to connect? And then is that you wouldn't even know if you were going to actually get the internet. And when you did get it, it wasn't like you were going on the World Wide Web. There wasn't. I mean, I said that you weren't, there wasn't a plethora of things to see. It was like you were, there wasn't like Google. No, you were, you were checking an email or maybe like having a chat in a chat room, but you weren't like looking things up that didn't really exist. Yeah. And so then in going to college, um, like music had started to become online, like a little more popular where you could download MP3s and you could make cds with these mp3s and you could listen to mp3s in your car and you could have a whole giant digital library of music and that's another thing that i feel like is missing from this generation is like you don't really own any music that's so weird yeah so <laughs> when i was younger probably up until like sixth grade i I had CDs and all of those types of things and every car had a CD player and all that. And now cars don't have a CD player anymore. And that's so crazy to me. Yeah. And you don't really own any music. Like, yeah. And almost now you don't really even own any movies anymore. I mean, I still have DVDs, but it's getting to the point where I don't really know why I have them because yeah, there's no need to like own an album or own a movie anymore i just think it's it's bizarre but i feel like it is it's so the equivalent is like owning a book collection so if i come to your house and you have books i can sort of figure you out or decide if i like you based on what books you're reading right this is how music is supposed to <laughs> yeah. work you go to someone's house right and they have that cd tower and you look at it and you go, eh, I don't like them or cool. I like this stuff, too. You don't have that anymore. How am I supposed to find friends no, and, you know, judge people? I don't. There's nothing. There. You have to like listen to their Spotify playlist. Yes. You have like to share that. your playlist. I think mm -hmm. technology has changed drastically. Tell me about your experience with smartphones. When did you get one? Like what what is your mobile phone experience? been like over the years so i got my first cell phone this is gonna sound kind of crazy but i got my first cell phone in third grade but it was not it was not a smartphone it wasn't you know it was it was a flip phone p9 all the way whenever i was texting and it was also a phone where 
you only had a certain amount of minutes you could call for. And you only had like a certain amount of text that you could send. So that was my first experience with a phone. And I had a flip phone for a long time. From third grade, probably until probably my sophomore year of high school. So I had it for a long time. But by the time I was in seventh or eighth grade, that's when people started to get smartphones. And I just didn't have one. My parents wouldn't buy me one. So then finally, in eighth eighth or ninth grade, I was like, get me an iPod Touch because you can you can go on the Wi-Fi and then you can text and do all the things and blah, 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 blah. So I finally got an iPod Touch and I was like, this is the best, but I could only use it on Wi-Fi. And that was until my sophomore year of high school. And then I was like, please, you guys, like, it's getting embarrassing that I don't have an iPhone. Like I need, I need an actual phone, not just the iPod touch anymore. And so then finally my sophomore year of high school, my parents got me an actual iPhone and that was my first experience with an actual smartphone. But yeah, it took a while to actually get there. What what do you think about your generation and their use of technology? I truly and genuinely think that we're all addicted to social media, technology, all the things. Yeah. Do you think that it's because you started so young? Because it still exists, but I think older people are less likely to have that issue. I think a lot of it has to do with the accessibility that having smartphones gives us. I don't necessarily think it has to do with us starting so young. I'm sure that that is a big factor, but I think the fact that smartphones give you the ability to contact people, FaceTime, message, all that kind of stuff, even when people are so far away and it lets you stay connected in different ways. I think that's a big way or a big reason that we're so addicted to it. And also it's like, we're never bored. And yeah. that's a huge reason I think well, why we're addicted to it. Cause it's like, if we get bored, we can open up Instagram, we can open up TikTok, we can open up Facebook. Like there's so many ways to keep ourselves from being bored, which I think is honestly a bad thing. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, boredom has positive qualities. I just remember that when I was young, I'm going to out my dad here. I don't even know if he listens to this. Um, He would, there's all, all women in the house and just my dad. And so sometimes he would go to the bathroom for like a very long period of time. And I found out later it was because it was the only way he could really get away from everybody. But when he was in the bathroom, he would take a magazine or a newspaper. And I wonder if he still does that or if he brings his cell phone. Yeah, I bet he brings his phone. You don't think he's still reading the paper on the toilet? Is that okay? I'm going to ask him. Um, But but you're right. There's never a moment like if you're if if your TV show has commercials, uh, look at your phone during the commercials. Like there's never a moment of just being and even when you're with your friends right it's it's looking things up as you're talking it's responding to text messages it's taking photos so you can put them on social media it's sharing social media with your friends in the moment watching videos with each other it's become really an integral part of what everyone is doing every day and you know i can't imagine what my work would be like without some of these conveniences honestly um yeah i can't life without without like Google and smartphones and all the things. Yeah. I mean, when I wanted to know what something was as a kid, I had to go to my set of Encyclopedia Britannica's and look that shit up. <laughs> like, yeah. And sometimes you just didn't I, know. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. We didn't have a way to find it. So I didn't know. The other thing that, I, that I've been thinking about a lot recently is, so my parents... We used to do road trips and stuff when I was younger. And my parents would use atlases to travel for the maps. Yeah. And and then and then after like the internet started to become a bigger thing, they would use MapQuest and they'd print out the directions and use MapQuest to get wherever. <laughs> and now it's like we have these little phones, these little GPSs in our little phone, they can get us anywhere. Yeah. It's 
so crazy how much more convenient it is. That is true. Because I, I think back to my parents, my mom literally knows how to read a map. <laughs> I'm like, I could never. Yeah. That is crazy. Well, it's funny because I was telling a story the other day about being on spring break in college and my friends and I driving <clears throat> from from Wisconsin to New Orleans for spring break. And I said, you know, that we got lost. And I realized, you know, it's not often people get lost anymore for very long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Like you don't, yeah. you're not just like driving around in circles or, or I know stopping at a gas station to ask for directions is something I don't think my children will ever have to do. Right. But yeah, I, I remember literally. we, you know, we went on this trip and we stopped in Memphis on the way to New Orleans for a day and a night. And we did, we had stacks of MapQuest directions that we had, had to pre-plan where we were going to go, how we were going to get there when we were going to do it and then print off the directions for each leg of the trip. And if, mm -hmm. and if something went awry, like let's say you spilled your Red Bull on the directions, potentially in the car, or, you know, you got chocolate all over the directions in the car, then you were going to have to stop and ask for directions because there was no way else to know. Yeah. I, I do love the GPS technology. I really do. I don't think it has a ton of downsides to it. Yeah. But there there is some technology that I think does have a lot of downsides. And social media, for me, is my number one. Yeah. I While I do use it and I do enjoy it, I would happily not. But I do feel some social pressure. How many different social media platforms do you use? Um, I use, I would say most of them, So I use Facebook, Instagram, X, threads, TikTok, YouTube, which there's a lot. I, what is threads? <laughs> it's basically Instagram's version of Twitter. So you can make a thread a threads account through Instagram. Basically you just like click a button, you have the same username, same login information, all the stuff, and you can get to threads from Instagram. Okay. At what point do you think we reach like a market saturation on things? Okay, I think about that all the time because I'm like at some point, at some point it has to end. And I actually feel like for the most part, it kind of has. There hasn't been an app that's came out in a while that has continued the same traction that like Facebook and Instagram have. But the reason that threads became a thing is because when Twitter became X, people meta, left. Facebook, all that made threads. And that and that's just because so. like people left Twitter. Yeah. But needed a similar so. platform. Right. Okay. God. And it's basically the exact same thing as Twitter. You know, the other technology thing that's so different is how people consume media and television. Um, growing up, you know, we would watch shows as a family. Um, there were things that we... I remember being able to record things at, at one point on a DVR. But before that, it was like, if you didn't hop on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., you were going to miss Wonder Years. And it's just too bad. So sad. <laughs> um, OK, I have a funny story about that. When I was young, probably six or seven, maybe even younger than that, I thought that the TV would wait for me to come back. So one day I was watching Drake and Josh and I was like, do, do, do. And then I was like, OK, I'm going to go play blah 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 and then I came back and I turned on the TV and Dragon Josh wasn't on anymore and I was like what the heck why isn't Dragon Josh on anymore and I had to learn the hard way <laughs> well that sounds that rough TV oh my gosh wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> what a tough life lesson your parents really they really did a good job there that is I, know, I can't believe them <laughs> <laughs> that is what you call really allowing someone to fall on their face and have to deal with I, the real yeah, life consequences I know. I know I know I can't believe them well it's it's just such a different experience in my mind so one of the things that I liked about television was that 
it was something that we could did generally as a family. There wasn't a lot of solo watching because we didn't have a lot of TVs. And so if my dad was watching baseball, then we were watching baseball. If my dad was watching cops, then we were watching cops. And if it was Wednesday, we were watching Wonder Years. And when we went to bed, my parents had shows that they watched as adults. And I just think, you know, two teenagers, 15 and 17, and they don't really watch TV. They don't really watch TV. And I didn't, people don't, this generation and even people your age don't watch a lot of TV compared to the way I still no. consume media. Do you ever, do you have cable? Right. Do you watch? No, I was just going to say that. I don't, we don't even have cable. All we pay for is internet. And then we have like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. And so but, do you like yeah. when Hulu does something that's more of a traditional television moment? And that is... Instead of Netflix was commercials. No, no commercials suck. Everybody's on the same page there. But uh, actually, the commercials were the time you could go to the bathroom. So like, yeah, I was going to say, I actually don't really mind the commercials because. Yeah, you got to pee or get your popcorn or. Yeah. And so when it's to it, it's like a commercial after like 30 seconds of the show going. That annoys me. But. Overall, they don't really bother me that much. Yeah. So Hulu started doing this first, I think. And I think Netflix does it too on occasion. And that is have a show that, excuse me, have a show that gets released once a week at a certain time. So they did, they started mm-hmm. doing that with Handmaid's Tale. And instead of having it where here's the season and everybody would binge it. And I think part of the reason that that I don't like that is spoiler alert. Like, I don't, I don't want to know what happens. I haven't had time to watch it. Yeah. And it's unfair that you've watched yeah. the whole season just because you don't have shit else to do, Becky. So, you know, <laughs> I, I'm trying to consume media on my time and I'm going to watch Handmaid's Tale when I have time. And I hate that it's all over the internet and now I know everything. So like, do you, do you like the sort of released every Wednesday night kind of a show that they're, I see them doing that more these days. I don't know. That one is hard for me because, so I like to watch reality TV and Netflix does too hot to handle and they'll release, (laughs) you know, a certain amount of episodes. Wait, hold on. Wait. (laughs) I love too hot to handle. (laughs) Okay. Wait, tell me what this is about. I need to know too hot to handle. Is it a kitchen show and they they can't wear the oven mitts or what? What's happening? Okay. No, no. So basically they get whatever, however many guys, however many girls. And they're people who essentially have just one night stands, flings. Like they don't really care about sex and hooking up and all that kind of stuff. So then they bring them onto the show. Under the guise that they're getting to go on some crazy cruise or crazy trip where they can do whatever and blah, 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 blah. And then it ends up being too hot to handle. And too hot to handle basically tries to teach people to value relationships more, essentially, and to not just have like flings and hookups and blah, 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 and to actually try to have relationships. So it's actually such a good show. (laughs) But the first, Two or three episodes can be so cringy because you're meeting everybody and it's like cringy reality TV. But then it gets good. Okay, so so back to the too hot to handle and why you don't like when shows drop once a week. Yeah, so too hot to handle, for example, or even you that there was also on Netflix. They would drop a few episodes, like three episodes, and then it would be like, OK, you have to wait until. November 3rd for the next three episodes or whatever. And I hated that because by the time it gets to the third episode, it's juicy. You know, you want to know what's next. And I can't know what's next because I have to wait until November 3rd. And the problem with that is that they'll drop the first three episodes on October 18th, you know, and then you have to wait two weeks for the next three episodes and that's just heinous in my opinion okay so your generation is incredibly impatient instant Uh, gratification right and this is like a perfect example of that is like yes having to they're in my world tv ran on 
like a season. And so it would start in like August or September and it would run until sweeps, right? So until, well, that's in the spring. So it'd run until about Thanksgiving and then your show would take a break and you wouldn't have any of that show until mid January. And then it would take some weird break in the spring for whatever, whatever they call sweeps. I don't even know what that is. I should probably look that up. And then in the summer, you really just didn't have any shows. Like there wasn't, there wasn't new TV in the summer, really the way there is now. If you're watching like primetime TV, they didn't have episodes in the summer. It was just like, I don't know, baseball games and reruns and stuff like that. For a lot of my life, it was like that. But I feel like in my adult years. No, no, no. Don't try to be old. No, don't. No, (laughs) I'm telling you. Because most of my life, we didn't actually for a while. We didn't have internet or cable when I was growing up. So I would watch uh, Seinfeld on DVD. And I watched like the same season of Seinfeld like four times. (laughs) It's a good show. But so, so it is. It's a really good show. But so for a while, it was like that. It was like you had to wait every Monday or whatever to watch the next episode of your show. So I do understand that I have been in that situation. And I feel like being in both where it's like you have to wait or you get to, you know, get the show right away. I'm obviously going to prefer getting the show right away. Yeah. Because I want to know what's happening next. ASAP. I think that the only thing that I really don't like about waiting is that I'm old and I forget stuff. And so then the next season comes out and I'm like, I don't remember anything that happened in seasons one, two, and three at all. Well, that's the other thing I was going to say. Not necessarily that, but being able to watch your shows on your own time, right? Yeah. Back in the day, it was like you had to wait every Monday. It only showed on Monday. But now, even if you do watch it weekly, say you have one day a week to watch TV, you get to watch it on that day instead of just missing it. Yeah, but like, you okay, I, I totally get that. But don't we feel like potentially that's the slippery slope of sort of having whatever you want, whenever you want and needing instant gratification. Because if you want to watch it, yes. it exists and you can watch it. You don't have to wait. You don't have to be patient. You don't have to experiment what by watching a different show you wouldn't normally try because you right. just, that's the only TV in the house and that's what you're watching tonight, right? And I, so I just, I think long-term for me, the effects of that are sort of, I need it and I need it now. And I think we do see that culturally, right? The idea of yeah. of DoorDash and having your yep. food. You know, the other day I had this conversation with Erin because she, so I'm digressing, but we were out running errands on our lunch break, me and Alex. And we had to like stop at the mall and grab something. And then we had like went to, I don't know, Del Taco to grab a soda or something. And Aaron's like, oh, I'm I um I'm trying to order something. Can you put like more money in my account? And I was like, she's like, oh, I have cash, so I'll give you the cash. And you could put it more money in my account. I'm like, okay, what how much do you need? She's like, I don't know. I'm just getting a soda. And I didn't know where she was physically at the time. She's like, I'm just getting a soda. I'm like, oh, okay. So like, you know, a dollar. I thought a dollar. Yeah. I didn't realize that sodas yeah. were like 225, but She's like, well, I don't know. And then she's, you know, doing some computing and I'm kind of waiting. And then she's like, um, I think it's more, it's going to be $8, $8 and 98 cents. And I was like, I'm sorry, $8 and 98 You're cents like, why? for a soda. And it's because it's through freaking Grubhub or whatever. It's because crap. she's literally ordering a Diet Coke from McDonald's and it costs $9. I'm blown away. No. I would no, never spend I, $9. Me either. I refuse to use any of the like ordering apps because of the delivery fees. I'm like, I will not do it. I will not do it. Because well, but the prices are inflated. Yeah. I mean, so if you, if you want to order something from you know, Domino's and the pizza is $10 on their website, it's $12 or $13 on Grubhub in addition to... Yes. The delivery fee, the taxes, and potentially the tip. Yeah. I mean, they got to make money. I get it, but it's wild but to me. I'm not exactly like I will not participate in that because that is just craziness. Yeah, she didn't think twice about it. Uh, I mean, in some ways, I think there's there's definitely advantages, right? Some folks don't have a vehicle, 
Um, or maybe are, you know, stuck home with their kids thinking, I really need lunch, but, you know, getting my toddlers in the car and going out to get something to eat is really a lot of work and it's not worth it. And so I totally, I totally understand the concept. I'm just shocked by how many people use it and that don't really need it. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I, the, the, the DoorDash thing and all of that is kind of alarming to me. And similar to the way we talked about how I think fashion follows you. I also think music follows you. I think you, you develop musical taste and things that you like when you're in your high school college years and that you just keep listening to it. And it just doesn't, it's, it just doesn't change. So when I was young, my dad was listening to music, classic rock, but that's the music he grew up with is now yeah. classic rock, right? And so I'm wondering, what are you listening to right now? Like, what is your jam? So my parents actually listened to a lot of classic rock growing up when I was growing up. When I was younger, though, it was, you know, from the time I was a baby until I was probably 10 or 11. And then when I got into junior high, that's when I started kind of branching off on my own and listening to my own type of music. and. Typically, I would listen to a lot of what was on the radio. So it was like a lot of pop and stuff like that, which I still enjoy. If you played a song from 2012 to 2016, I would enjoy that like thoroughly. But I, when I was exploring on you know YouTube of the different genres of music, I really enjoyed emo music and like alternative music. So that's mainly what I listen to now as I'm older. And it also helps that Matt listens to the same genre of music. So that's very, very big for us. There. So what is, give me, give me some band names that you listen to regularly right now. Uh, right now I listen to Sleeping With Sirens a lot because they have a concert coming in October that we're going to try and go to. I also listen to a band called Issues. Uh, who else? Arrows in Action. That's one of my favorite. I'm, they're actually a newer band that I've started listening to, listening to recently, but they're the same genre. Dance, Gavin, Dance. Sure. Those are my main ones. I also listen to a lot of country music too, though. Okay. So when I was your age, I was um, very into emo music and alternative rock slash punk rock. I yeah. don't know that there's much of that genre anymore. Punk rock is not really as popular as it was, at least when I was in in the late 90s and the early 2000s on the West Coast. So Dashboard Confessional was my all-time favorite emo band. And I bet now their music is on like um, classic, classic rock stations. I'm, I'm, I mean, really, probably. Do you even know who Dashboard Confessional is? No, oh I my don't. gosh. I'm going to make you a CD. <laughs> it's, the, it's the ultimate love language. I'm going to make you a CD. You know, I, I kind of feel like I'm not as old as I thought after you and I have been talking. Either that or you are an old soul. I don't know which it is. <laughs> ne- neither is bad. Maybe it's both. Yeah. A little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of both. Um, one, one last question. What is one thing that you engage in right now that makes you feel old? Uh, Well. Is it going to bed super early? No, I do love going to bed. Okay. It doesn't have to be like a social media thing. No, no, no. Just like a life, a life choice that you make that you're like, I know this makes me an old person, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, my big thing is I get excited for the most mundane things. I'm like, I'll come home and I'm like, oh, I'm coming home to a clean house. (laughs) Oh, I'm coming home to my laundry being done. The dishes are done, stuff like that. And then um, there was one other thing. Oh, I've started a Christmas list because... I always think of things I want and then I forget. I have three items on the Christmas list right now. All three items are 
household items. Uh, appliances, yeah. It's not fun little, fun no. little things. <laughs> it's like a household item. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it makes you feel old. You're it's, like, I can't wait yes. for Christmas and I'm finally going to get that waffle iron. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have moments like that all the time. That's essentially my life. But saying folks is one of them. I, I, I just, like I said, it's a good word. It kind of, it's genderless. It's just, it's, it is. it's all y'all, you know, it's, it's anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for imparting your wisdom on me because you know what I learned today? There are at least five social media apps that I don't even know what they are. I don't have them. <laughs> I don't know if my kids use them. I don't know any of the, I, I don't know any of those things. Um, I am a two app social media person, and you could probably guess That's what it. they are. Honestly, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, it should stay that way. It's better that way. <laughs> Except I will say I do love TikTok. I won't lie to you. Can't I don't do it. I don't do the I, TikTok. I know. Don't do it. Don't do it because you will be sucked into a hole. You know, I'm not, so. it's the videos. I'm not really into video. Like, I I don't know why. I don't know what it is about it. Like, I'm into looking at a picture and reading your caption about what you did. But I don't really want to watch a long video. Like, I'm just not. That's fair. Thank you. Um, Elsa, if all of my followers want to find you, how do they do that? Like, not show up at your house. Like, don't drop your address. I'm not <laughs> just like, just like on social media. How do we find you? Yes. Um, all my social media handles are Elsa underscore Hassett. My last name has two S's and two T's. Okay. I'm so. going to drop it in the, in the information. <laughs> um, thank you for being here and being young. I appreciate that. <laughs> people like you are going to help keep people like me feeling a little bit young. That's, that's the hope. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Molly. I had fun. Oh, you did? You had fun? <laughs> Wait, let's go back. You had fun. Yeah. Okay. This is Hot Flashbacks. We're out. Want more? We're on all the major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Just search for Hot Flashbacks and subscribe.